Now finally we will test how good this wire recorder sounds. Now to do that we want to record the audio from the output rather than the internal speaker and we want to record using the line input. Now as you can see these connectors are the same as for the wall plug. Now come to think of it this is probably a repurposed speaker connector as it has the speaker symbol on its back. So we're gonna make our own cables using these standard European wall plugs this shielded cable and these two RCA connectors. Now there's quite a lot of leftover wire on this collector spool that I want to try to get off. I guess we could just disassemble this spool and throw the wire away. But it would be nicer to be able to save it. So I have this spool where the wire is unsalvageable. So I'm going to try to get this wire off it and use it to collect this wire. Well that was totally not worth it. I'm not doing that again. So if you have a tangled wire spool, throw it away. Pulling pieces of talking wire from your skin is not that fun. Well now it's done, let's collect the leftover wire.
there we go it's clean so as you might have seen you snap the wire from this piece of paper if you don't stop it on time so when you place a new spool here you will have to remember the value of the counter so when you rewind it you have to stop it before the counter reaches its initial value you can retie it of course but a bit of a hassle okay so let's see what was on this Okay, sorry. Tagne fram Uccella Salen Den dunkel röda färg Härligt glöm Så nej, uch, det hörs inte bra. Och så sjunger pojkarna Om att de är svenska. Jag är stora Sådär jag är svensk This is what the Swedish Luxor branded wire looks like. They call their wire recorders magnophones and they call the wire itself the talking wire. Here it says it's a standard spool according to Armour Chicago. Now it might be hard to tell on camera but these spools are solid sturdy pieces of metal and they're quite heavy. It really feels like a high quality item. Now I want to use some of these wire spools to record something myself, but I usually face the same dilemma in these situations. Let's take this as an example. This is recorded on someone's New Year's Eve 1953. I don't care very much about their New Year's Eve. I don't care very much about their cousins or their grandfather either. But once I record something on this wire, this information will be wiped out from the universe forever. And it's most certainly the last chance to ever hear Folke and Anna Greta again. Now this also makes you wonder, since this technology has been around for well over a hundred years, how many historic events or lost pieces of music could be found hidden away on some of these wires? A pot of beans helps to pass the evening. The boys were fed chopped corn and garbage. Her purse was filled with useless trash. A pot of beans helps to pass the evening. The boys were fed chopped corn and garbage. Her purse was filled with useless trash. There's quite a lot of noise in the signal. Maybe the reed head is dirty. Let's take a look. All right, let's do some cleaning.
In conclusion, this technology is no doubt sufficient for voice recording, as there is no problem whatsoever interpreting what's being said, whether the recording is made just now or 70 years ago. When it comes to music, it's more subjective. It is a far cry from the quality of its successor, the magnetic tape, but that does not necessarily mean that it's too bad to enjoy music on. Now, there are still some things that could be done to this unit to further improve the audio quality. More suitable capacitors could be chosen to improve the interference resilience, the mechanical part could be serviced properly to improve the stability, and if previously unused wire were used instead of this, there may have been less intermittent noise in the recordings. Regardless, it's easy to understand the transition to magnetic tape. Vastly improved sound quality, much easier handling, the ability to record multiple channels simultaneously, although the wire has one property that can't be matched, and that's longevity. The degradation of magnetic tape is a huge concern right now as there is an immense amount of information on degrading tape that needs to be preserved or it will be lost forever. The wire does not have the same problems with degradation. It has other potential problems such as rust, but as long as the wire is stored correctly that shouldn't be a significant problem. Based on how well the wire recordings have held up so far, it might just be the longest lasting means of rewritable data storage we have. And I would not be surprised if my misread Cambridge sentences on this spool will outlive every other piece of data I have ever created. I would like to conclude this project with one last test. As I said, a great benefit with using magnetic tape is the ability to record multiple channels, which makes the comparison a bit unfair, as the brain can do a lot of audio processing when presented with stereo sound. So I will now record both left and right channel of a song and mix them together as stereo. Thank you.